Hey guys, and so welcome back to Battlefront updates and some more exciting Star Wars Battlefront Scarif DLC content. EA were kind enough to fly me out to LA to record this footage and make some videos for you guys. In this video, I wanted to show off and talk about all the new weapons, star cards, and vehicle power ups that are being added in the Scarif DLC. In total, we're getting two new blasters, one star card, one vehicle pickup, and one normal power up, although one of the new blasters sort of counts as three. But let's start off with the blasters and the most interesting addition to the game, the A180 blaster pistol, which is also the one Jin uses. This blaster pistol brings a completely new mechanic to the board as it actually replaces your whole star card hand with three different abilities slash modifications to the pistol. Something to note is that I didn't realize that you actually modify your pistol each time you use this weapon, but when I switched to first person it showed a lot more clearly, which is why you will see some first person gameplay with this weapon. The way this works is simply that the normal pistol has a decent blaster damage that can kill people fairly well, but it's the actual abilities that comes with it that you can do some serious damage with, and these abilities work similarly to star cards as they are activated with the same keys, have cooldowns and can be reset with power-ups such as the card refresh. You can also switch to these modifications and then switch back without them going on cooldown. The first modification available is the sniper rifle. This allows you to fire one powerful sniper shot that is able to one-shot people. What I like about the sniper rifle is that it works a bit like an opposite to the cycler rifle, as if you hit someone at close range it will not one-shot them unless you hit them in the head, whereas if you hit someone further away you will often get a one shot. I did get quite a lot of nice snipes with this modification and it was very rewarding to hit those shots across the map. The second modification is the blaster rifle modification and also what I think is my favorite of them all. This allows you to fire a really powerful blaster rifle for a couple of seconds which I thought was very good. If I used it at the right time I could easily wipe out three or four enemies with quick succession and this modification is similar to the one Jin has, except that this one is limited to a few seconds of usage. The third and final modification is the Ion Shot, which looks a bit like the TL-50 secondary fire, although it's not. It does charge up the same way and fires an orb that drops down fairly fast, but this shot does not deal a lot of damage against players, but is instead effective against vehicles, turrets and shields, which is what makes this into an all-around weapon. You have a weapon for sniping, a weapon for short range, and a weapon for vehicles. I think this weapon was a ton of fun to use, and it's nice to have something that forces people to use something other than a jump pack and back the bomb, and I gotta give DICE huge props for coming up with this weapon to get some more variety into the game. The next blaster added to the game is also a brand new type, and it's the DT-29 blaster pistol. This is the first weapon in the game that you actually have to reload. Each magazine has 6 shots and after that you need to manually reload the weapon and it doesn't have the overheat ability like the other weapons do. This makes you play differently than you do with other weapons because when you do reload the blaster pistol you can't use your star cards and this is something that took some getting used to because multiple times I started reloading and couldn't use my back bomb at the same time which led to me dying. But after a while you learn to use the back bomb first and then reload. This weapon is actually very powerful and at short range it is able to two shot people in the chest and I got some insanely good games with this weapon and it might actually be one of my new favorite blasters. It's not OP though because the damage drop off starts pretty fast and since it only has 6 rounds in a magazine it's very hard to kill people at long range and I always try to sneak up close to them. The next addition to the game is the new star card, Sonic Imploder. This is a star card that blinds damages and reduces the armor of any enemies it hits for a while. These type of star cards are always hard to measure how effective they are, but personally I didn't feel like it was too good. The damage is very low and I didn't get a single kill with it during the whole day, but it does blind enemies and reduce their armor, so it definitely is something that will be a very team focused star card. I think this is another ability that will come in handy in close quarters maps, as if you throw that into a room before storming it, it's gonna be a big advantage for your team. Moving on, we have the two new vehicle pickups. These work a bit differently, so let's start off with the TIE Striker. This is a pickup you can get on the Imperial side from the normal power-ups, so it's not available through a separate vehicle pickup, although the website makes it look like that. 
When you call in this power up, a TIE striker will do a couple of strafe runs close to your location and shoot at enemies in the nearby area. We noticed that this attack wasn't all that powerful as I probably called in around 5 of these during the whole event but only got 2 or 3 kills. So compared to the U-Wing it was pretty useless. It does however require zero work so if you pick it up simply activate it right away and you might get some free kills. On top of that it looks pretty damn cool seeing the striker fly over the map. Lastly we have the U-Wing. This is available as a separate vehicle pickup for the Rebels and also as a playable vehicle in the first phase of the infiltration game mode. When you get this pickup you get to control the gunner seat of a U-Wing flying around the map and this position is very powerful. You can really wreak havoc to the Imperials as long as you know where they are located at which can be hard to do when they hide in the jungle. The health works similarly to the 8080s and you get more time the more kills you get. This means that sometimes people got upwards to 15 or 20 kills with the U-Wing due to how strong it is. You can however shoot down the U-Wing from the ground with various types of weapons and I got this pretty nice jump shot with the disruption rifle which instantly took it out so although it can be annoying it can also be taken out fairly easily. But keep in mind that if you are controlling the U-Wing you can actually use the lock gun jammer as well as a shield to give you some extra protection. If we move on to the first section of the infiltration game mode, the U-Wings are the transports you need to escort to the shield gate in order to progress the game mode. And the U-Wings are very defensive vehicles as they have a speed boost, shield and lock-on jammer. I also noticed that they have a lot sharper turn radius and more responsive controls compared to the other ships which made them a lot smoother to fly around with. But that is all the new additions coming in this DLC when it comes to weapons, star cards and pickups. Make sure to let me know in the comments below which one you think looked the coolest and don't forget to drop a like if you enjoyed the video. I'm gonna show you some highlights I've gotten with all of these new additions for the rest of the video but for now thank you very much for watching and as always may the force be with you.